Hey guys, it's Tombi. Welcome back. And today I'm going to show you something that I've been working on for a couple months now, and that is turning these vintage silver serving trays into pottery. But first, really quickly, I just want to say thank you guys so much for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. I didn't think that it would happen so fast, and I know it's been a little while since I posted my last video, and that's because I've been focusing on making a ton of stuff for my first ever Maker's Market, which is happening next weekend. But once the market is over, I'm really excited to make a video sharing my experience about how the market went and what I learned from it. So let's talk a bit about these trays and how I got the idea to make pottery from these. So if you guys have watched my other videos, then you've seen that I've gotten really interested in plants again. And lately, I've been thinking a lot about finding new and interesting ways to grow and display my houseplants. So I started kind of looking into bonsai, but that seems a little bit like too much commitment, and I don't think I can do that. But I did find this other thing called kusamono, which is kind of like potted arrangements. These are actually things that are usually used as accent pieces next to real bonsai, but they include all sorts of plants, including a lot of native plants or plants just like gathered from around the area, and they're placed super carefully to create a very interesting and elegant looking composition. I really like that idea, and it just got me thinking about how I can kind of elevate my own plants. And one of the main ways that I was thinking about that is using a lot shallower pots to grow my plants rather than tall or standard sized terracotta pots. And of course those kinds of shallow pots are usually just bonsai pots. But bonsai pots come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, and I was just thinking about how am I gonna make this? Well, when I went thrifting with my brother and sister-in-law a few months ago, I saw these silver platters sitting in a thrift store, and I just thought that they would be the perfect shape for a bonsai planter, but I need a way to turn this into pottery. And you could just lay clay inside here as a mold, but I'm not a fan of that because it can get pretty sticky if the surface is not porous. So we're gonna turn these into plaster molds by pouring plaster in this part and then letting it set and then we can pop it out afterwards, and then we'll use that plaster as a mold to make our plant pot. So let's go ahead and head over to my garage so that we can turn this into something that looks more like this. So I actually picked up a bunch of different things that I could use to make plaster molds. For example, I got this square vase, which I really liked because you can see that the inside is a little bit tapered, and that's going to end up translating into our mold as well. I also like that the vase is pretty deep. This means that we can kind of choose how tall we want our mold to be, and I think for this I'm gonna do about half. And just to show you that you can pretty much do this with anything, I also got this shell-shaped dish, and of course I also have the silver platters that I bought as well. So these were just objects that I found at my local thrift store. The grand total of all of this probably came to about like $20. So I think this is a pretty great and inexpensive way to try out a bunch of different shapes when you're making pottery. Also just want to note that non-porous surfaces work best, like metal and plastic. So let's talk a little bit about plaster. There are many different kinds of plaster that you can buy, you can even find it at Home Depot, but for pottery purposes, it's best to stick to pottery plaster. And honestly, this is really inexpensive as well. You can buy a big 50 pound bag of it at your local pottery supply for probably less than 30 bucks, and that's gonna make a ton of plaster molds. So plaster is basically a powder that you can add to water, which then hardens. And in particular for pottery, it's really useful because it stays super porous, meaning that even after it hardens, it can absorb water. If you've ever touched clay before, then you know that clay is sticky when it's wet. So unless a surface is porous when it's touching it, the clay is going to stick and it can possibly warp whatever you're working on. So having a plaster mold means that we can take it off the mold pretty easily because the water from the surface of the clay is absorbed and then you can just peel it off pretty easily. I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty chemistry of this in this video, but if people are interested in hearing about it later then I can definitely make another video on it. But for now, just keep in mind that mixing plaster is actually a chemical reaction, and it's really important for you to get the ratio of plaster to water correct, so you're definitely going to need a scale so you can weigh out your water and your plaster. If you add too much water, then your plaster is going to absorb more water, but also be more soft and brittle. And if you add too much powdered plaster, it's going to be too hard or not absorb any water. And I'll include more information about the proper ratios of plaster to water in the description. Once we finish mixing our plaster, then we're going to pour it into our molds. 
You're going to want to keep the plaster as level as possible in your container because that's going to end up being the base of the mold. I'm using some really thin door stoppers to kind of just adjust the height of each mold so that I can make sure that it's completely level. And you can see from my pouring that my plaster is a little bit lumpy and you actually want to avoid having any of those lumps. You want to make sure that the plaster is well mixed but also that you don't incorporate a lot of air into it. Now that we've poured our plaster, we're going to wait for the molds to set, and that's going to take about 30 to 40 minutes. So after I poured these, I went to go take a lunch break, and by the time I came back, they were ready to be unmolded. You'll know that they're ready when they're firm to the touch. It took a little bit of finesse, but the plaster did come out of the metal containers pretty easily. I try to keep a piece of foam underneath because the plaster is still pretty brittle at this stage. You can pretty easily scratch it or chip it if you're not careful, so just keep that in mind when you're trying to unmold them. These came out so smooth and perfect, honestly, it was super satisfying. Once they've all been unmolded, it's good practice to let them dry out completely before you use them for the first time. So I let these dry for about two weeks before I decided to use them. So for my bonsai pots, I'm trying out a new clay that I don't usually use. This is a very rocky and gritty red clay. I thought the color was really nice, and I thought it would look good as a plant pot, and it's also just fun to switch it up in the studio. I don't want to use the same clay all the time. But to make these plant pots, it's going to be really really straightforward. Basically, I'm taking a piece of clay, and I'm rolling it out to a flat slab. We're going to make sure that that slab is really nice and even, and a little bit thicker than usual since it's going to be a plant pot. And then I'm going to compress the clay because that helps the clay particles stick together. Then we're going to take our plaster mold and we're just going to drape our clay slab over the mold. Of course, it's not going to fit perfectly because you're trying to put a flat thing on a round thing. To make things easier, I'm just going to trim off some of the excess first. And once we remove that, it's going to be a lot easier when we put this on my banding wheel. And this is where we're going to do a proper trim around the edge of the mold. Once that's done, then we're going to compress the clay against the mold, and that's going to make sure that the clay takes on the right shape. Then while the pot is still on the mold, we're going to add some feet so the pot isn't just sitting directly on the ground. To do this, I'm using a wire brush to sort of score around the bottom of the pot, and then I'm going to brush on slip, which is basically water added to clay. This is going to act as glue when we add a log of clay on top, and it's going to help prevent any cracks from forming where the feet are attached to the pot. After rolling out the clay, I just lay it on top, and then I start to pinch it down just so I can really properly secure it to the pot. Looks a little bit messy right now, but it's going to be a lot easier to clean it up after it dries out a little bit. So we're going to cover this and put it away for maybe a day or two. And then we'll come back when the clay is at a stage of dryness called leather hard. It's called that because, shocker, it kind of feels like leather. And I'm going to use one of my favorite tools to shape this. It's called a clay shredder. It's also known as a rasp or a sure form. But really all it is is just like a fancy cheese grater. This tool does a really great job of evening out really any surface. So I use it on both the feet and the rim of the pot to make sure that both are flat. And then I take a very small carving tool to clean up the lines where the foot meets the pot. Once the foot is shaped how I like it, I'm just going to measure out where I'm going to cut out a little bit of the foot. That way it just looks a little nicer, it's more decorative. And I also think that it makes sure that no water gets trapped underneath the pot when you water the plant. But yeah, this is a pretty standard feature of most bonsai pots, so we're just going to replicate that here as well. And finally, we're just going to add some drainage holes using this sharp hole puncher tool. This is honestly one of my favorite tools too, it's super useful. I don't know what I would do without it. And this is what the pot looks like before we put it in the kiln. This pot is going to get fired a total of two times. The first time it's going to get fired at a relatively lower temperature. This is called a bisque firing and it's a step used in most non-industry practices. It fires the clay to a temperature that is high enough to turn it into ceramic so that it's more durable, but also still porous so that it can accept glaze. As you can see here, I'm dipping the pots into the glaze now, but once the pots are glazed, it's going to go into the kiln one more time, and this is for the glaze firing. 
This is when the clay and glaze are fired to their final temperature and when you'll be able to see the finished result. So I'll just pop these into the kiln and then I'll see you when they're done. So we made a bunch of different pots using those plaster molds and here is how they came out. I made a couple square ones like this using the mold that came from the glass vase. I also made another square planter that I glazed using this sort of beige off-white glaze. It did this thing where it ended up bubbling on this clay. There were so many bubbles, I don't know if I have a picture of what it looked like before, but I decided to just sand it down with some diamond sanding pads and see what it would look like, and I ended up really liking it. It adds a lot of texture to the plant pot. I think it just looks really cool with uh, this plant. This is actually the only plant that I repotted into one of these planters that I made. This is a Ludicia discolor, which is a jewel orchid. It's probably the most common kind of jewel orchid. I found this one for $4, and it has grown quite a bit since I got it a few months ago. I also decided to get some moss and plant it on top here, and hopefully it'll start to spread and cover the entire surface. I think it'll look really nice with the red color of the plant and the light green color of the moss with the texture of the plant pot. I just think it's gonna look really cool. I have these smaller oval sized planters that came from the silver platter or the smaller silver platter and I have one that I glazed in black as well. I also have this larger bonsai planter. I'm realizing now that the brown glaze is like not super contrasty with the color of the clay which is like a dark brown red but I really like how it turned out. It has a really nice sort of variegated appearance and I think that's generally pretty desirable for ceramics, at least in my opinion. So I'm still gonna have to figure out what plants I'm gonna be planting in these other ones. But I think that's for another video where I'll do some repotting when I have plants that I've decided to plant in these. So I think that's pretty much everything that I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this video, then please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. I'm having so much fun combining all my interests of pottery and plants and home decor. And I just wanna share that with you guys. So if you have friends who you think would really enjoy this kind of content, then please share this video with them. Coming up, I think I'm gonna be doing a plant tour soon to show you guys how my plant collection has changed since the last time, which was probably five or six months ago, and I'm also going to make a video about how my first art market went, so stay tuned for those. Thank you again so much for watching, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!